BIM enthusiast uh, since 2007, so uh, an OG for, for the BIM. I mean, the BIM is very old, but still very old-time uh, enthusiast. And uh, he will be talking about uh, a BIM VM for Android following Luke's talk on BIM on, on the browser and the uh, Arian BIM on, on, on uh, Embedded, now BIM for Android. So let's give it up, give it up for Victor. Thank you. Welcome, everyone. So, yeah, as it was mentioned in the introduction, I have been a BIM enthusiast since 2007, but uh, today I would like to talk uh, about a project that I started last summer. So it's basically half a year's work, or a bit more, which is named the Coffee Beam. Uh, let's look at the questions that I would like to answer today. First, uh, I uh, wanted to know how the beam file actually works. So that was my main motivation. I was, I was really curious how to get it running. And uh, also I found it a use case that uh, why not run the beam files on Android in a very, very simple way. So you should ex imagine a, a lightweight uh, a beam execution environment. Uh, so I wanted to skip all the different stuff uh, which can be issues on Android, like getting the right privileges uh, for running the files or, or uh, uh, using some uh, uh, scripting layers to, to provide uh, uh, a base a foundation for the beam uh, and also to, to just make it, make it work in a simple way. So I thought that this should be possible. Let's see later if this is possible or not. What do you need to make it happen? So what are the building blocks that you can use? How these parts fit together? So I'm talking about the Erlang part, the Beam part, but also uh, the Android part. And uh, last but not least, how can we ensure <laughs> the communication between the phone and uh, the Erlang VM? Yes, so this seems possible, what I've done, uh, but different in you know, quite a lot of ways. If you are uh, using Erlang to build Android applications, this, co this Coffee Beam uh, execution environment uh, basically ensures that they are robust. That's quite okay. So it, it does uh, what you expect from a Beam file. So it understands the, the basic Erlang mechanism and also being a functional programming language, uh, function with the same uh, parameters will result in the same, uh, will give the same result. Also, it is concurrent, so processes are supported. Uh, you can start uh, as many processes in the VM uh, as you want. Scalable, well, this is not yet implemented, but uh, uh, it, it may be doable. Soft real-time, it just depends on the capabilities uh, of your Android device. Let's see a short demo. What I made, this is basically the tic-tac-toe game uh, built on the Coffee Beam VM. And uh, in the background, there is a Beam process uh, running the game logic and also managing the computer intelligence. If you're watching online, uh, you should find the link uh, to this video uh, at uh, the topic description. So I'm playing with the X. The computer is with the circle. And as you can see, the beam intelligence is working on the mobile phone, uh, providing the next uh, steps to the computer. So it seems possible, but what do you need for that? To make it work, first, uh, basically, uh, you need to get Android to understand the Beam file. As the main language for Android is Java, there are also many other ways to, to do this, like Kotlin or C++ and things like that. Uh, I chose Java to understand the Beam file. Also, uh, you need to load the Beam in an Android way, because it's, this is not as simple as a uh, usual file system on your PC. Uh, there are special privileges uh, 
that you need to access files and also uh, in this project you want the beam files to be presented uh, in the source code integrated in, into the Android basically uh, as a library uh, or as a, as a resource that you can reuse. What I wanted to avoid is to recompile uh, the beam files in a special way that it will fit Android so these beam files basically are runnable on every PC as well. You need to create a VM for sure uh, that executes this beam so there should be a logic uh, on executing the, the parse beam file and also you need to provide a way of communication to interact uh, with the Android. This is a different approach and uh, what I chose is to use high level structures in the VM implementation so I, I didn't want to, to manage the, the low level memory or optimize for low uh, memory usage uh, managing the bits and bytes uh, because in, in an Android phone you have plenty of memory so it's, uh, it's not, not a bottleneck. The more the bottleneck is uh, the CPU power so if you are using a lot of CPU uh, then it will shorten your device's lifetime. How these parts fit together? Basically you have the VM written in Java and also uh, compiled into a, a jar library that you can use. So the green boxes are what you can use for free, what you get for free. You need to add to this library your own custom beam files that you pre-compiled and insert the whole thing into an Android activity. I will talk about this later. Uh, and also you have to have a beam client or a customized beam client uh, which has the purpose of uh, managing the VM itself and also handling the communication between the VM and your Android application. When everything is ready, you package it into an APK and uh, you have a deployable Android application using Erlang on your phone. The Bing client is partially implemented in the VM itself, so you get a Bing client class which provides uh, the basic functionality like starting and stopping the VM, also loading the beam file uh, and applying custom functions which are basically translated into Erlang function calls. And what you in need to implement yourself is to provide input for uh, which functions and which uh, arguments to apply and uh, uh, provide a way to, to handle the results of your function calls and also uh, to implement callbacks for your custom function calls from inside the VM to the outside world to the Android. I promise you that this will be the most complex slide for today, for this talk. Uh, let me just uh, show the uh, behavior of this uh, tic-tac-toe game, what I implemented. So you first uh, <coughs> start uh, an Android activity which is basically uh, a way of creating interactive applications. You can imagine activity as a class, a Java class, uh, which uh, has the functionality to interact with the user, getting the, the GUI elements together, and, uh, and also uh, managing the, uh, the process uh, in an Android way. So it provides GUI processes and other processes as well. So you can uh, imagine the Android activity as a simple application. From this Android activity you can call the Beam client or the customized Beam client uh, which uh, you have implemented to apply a function call to the VM. Basically you provide strings like the module name, function name and the argument list which is a, a special type that, that is implemented in Java uh, in order to understand the Beam structures. The tic-tac-toe game will start, the internal Erlang function call is tic-tac-toe start, which returns the PID. This PID is uh, transformed back as a function call back inside the Android, so you, you have the game PID which you can refer to. This game PID is basically a new process that is started inside the VM. You press the new game button, then it will also apply a function call that uh, starts a new game, and the game process actually uh, sends updates uh, repeatedly to the Android VM uh, with the custom function called Beam Client Update. 
how to handle this update function is basically depends on how you write the Android activity. In this game, this update contains the information about the game, uh, the board, the current state of the board, and what action or event has happened. Like uh, the player or the computer has placed a sign on the table, or uh, the board has changed, someone has uh, won, someone has lost, or the game ends in a draw, uh, like in the video. Also, when you click a field, it invokes uh, in the same way uh, function apply apply MFA, tic-tac-toe put, then uh, a board update happens and also the put player events, so the player has put uh, their sign on the board, then the computer's turn, uh, this also updates the board, and after many, many iterations, you will end up with uh, uh, updating the board with the event like draw, win, or loss. So this is, this is basically the uh, game communication. And uh, <coughs> the game logic is fully implemented inside one Erlang module in about 200 lines. This is the game flow and the computer's intelligence. And also there are some uh, uh, special callback handling which, is, which are written inside the Android activity in Java to handle these, uh, this functionality. But the VM is untouched. So the library that, that is provided uh, by the Coffee Bean VM, uh, basically you can use it as is. This is a public project. So this is the GitHub address uh, where you can check the source code. And also uh, I will encourage you to contribute to this as well because there is a lot of work to be done, like uh, future plans I.O. handling, this is not yet implemented. Also, it is a big question how to handle I.O. in Android because you usually uh, don't have a mechanism to, uh, to fetch or, or view the log files or you don't have a, a terminal screen where you can uh, examine the results of function calls. So you need to hand it in, handle it in a different way. Also, file handling is, is a, a bit tricky in Android. So there are a lot of questions in that. Uh, network support, yeah, it would be really good to have a cluster of Android phones working together as uh, nodes of one distribution group. This is, this is still a dream, but I hope it will come in the future. Node management, otherwise uh, number handling. Of course, uh, Java doesn't support the big numbers as a built-in type, so you have to, you have to implement the mechanism uh, yourself based on uh, what has been done already in Erlang, handling big numbers. And also there are lots of BIFs, BIFs uh, built-in functions that uh, are, are still need to be implemented or to be reviewed. And for the end, some useful reading. So these were the sources which I used uh, to understand the beam and, and get a, a more detailed picture on how Beam works and which I use basically in the Coffee Beam VM implementation. So we have a lot of time, so we have more time for questions. Thanks for your attention. <laughs> yes? Um, I'm assuming since you went to Beam Wisdom uh, that your, <coughs> did you look at urging which hasn't been updated in a while at all, or was this like a from scratch implementation? Yes, so the question was uh, if uh, uh, urging was uh, uh, an option, or uh, if I have looked uh, uh, in the source, as mentioned in the Beam Wisdoms. Uh, yes, I studied this solution. Uh, yeah, this is a common question, so I put up this uh, into a slide. Uh, I have examined a lot of different uh, options. One of them was urging. Uh, why I didn't really use uh, this uh, implementation is that, yeah, some parts were really nice and really useful, for example, in, in handling uh, the different Erlang types. Uh, I didn't take the code as is. I had, some, I, I had to make some modifications. Uh, but of course, I wanted to use uh, it in a different way. So using the, the meaning of the types in understanding beam files, but not in recompilation of the code. So that's why Erlang uh, 
as a complete option was not considered. Any other question? Yes? Um, what the, uh, are the specific uh, complicated configuration and installation uh, parts of uh, building airline for Android for non rooted devices uh, apart from rooted devices? What separates this? Uh, please clarify so, the question. Uh, I, yeah. If I'm mm -hmm. not mistaken, um, airline. I mean, the beam can be cross compiled for Android, and um, so rooted devices can root that pretty easily. But what ma what makes it uh, more complex for non rooted devices? Yes. So basically, beam files are files. The question was that uh, uh, what makes uh, this beam file handling more complex for Android phones? Uh, although there are some cross compilation um, functionalities that you can use. Uh, Basically, beam files are files, so you have to handle them uh, as binary input, as accessing file on a file system, which is not always easy on an Android phone. You have to uh, get the resources or get access to the resources into to the directory where this file is, is located, and, uh, and this is sometimes not so easy. And uh, also, uh, in this solution, you can basically uh, use a pre-compiled beam and put it uh, uh, as a resource inside uh, your custom application without changing the original content of the Erlang source from which beam f this uh, beam file was compiled. So, so that was my goal. Yes. Yes, I have a lot of different test cases, basically using the end framework for <coughs> compiling the ja uh, Java code, uh, creating the, the jar library, but also there is a test module uh, where you input a lot of Erlang expressions and have an expectation on the, on the functional results, and, uh, and this is how it is tested. Uh, this involves uh, also uh, creating new processes or, or checking how the the, the more tricky parts in the VM are handled. So the end test framework is basically the answer, what, what you use as a framework. Sorry. We may need it. Thank you.